Hey guys, and welcome to a um, little aside video I'm creating. Uh, someone uh, requested me to make a program where um, it'll display the data of a database in different parts in t of TKinter. So I'm just going to go over what I did here. Um, I haven't really talked about this, like TKinter and stuff, in my channel before, so you may not know what I'm doing. But uh, I just made this just, you know, if you do understand, you'll get how I'm doing it. Okay, so the goal of this is to create different tables in a database. And then um, it should take uh, every table and it'll, there'll be like a button next to it. And when you click the button, uh, it'll show all the data of the tables. Okay, so what we are going to do... So I'm I'm actually so th this part of the code, uh, we're connecting to a database. We are making our cursor so we can retrieve data from the database. We're creating tables, you know, just to make sure it works. We're inserting values into the tables, here and here, and then this statement I haven't talked about before. Uh, SQLite master is actually like a kind of like a master list that holds all the information, the table, the inputs, and everything. So what we're doing is we're actually taking the names of the tables in this statement because they're saying where type equals table. So that's what we're doing here. And then this list E is just putting it in a readable format. So now we have a list of all the table names. Okay, so this part uh, may, uh, mainly is from a um, tkinter like switching between frames kind of template. It's pretty commonly used, this kind of template. So I actually am not going to... Actually, I, I can uh, go through it. But um, just saying that I didn't actually create the entire thing myself. Uh, there are only specific parts that I created. So first I'll go over how it switches between frames in TKinter. And then I'll go over the parts that I added to make it work. So first we're creating a class, my app. And it's inheriting from TK. Um, normally we would say something like root equals tk, like that, but um, instead of doing that we're using classes, so that's why we're inheriting from tk. And then we're using our initialization function, and we initialize the tk, which is pretty much just creating that window. And then we're creating a frame, this is like the master frame, and then we're going to pack that. And then we, here we made a dictionary of uh, different frames. So we're going to have different frames in this uh, program. So we're uh, just making a dictionary right here. Um, this part I made, so we don't need to worry about that right now. Uh, I'll go into that later. Here we are incrementing the variable f in this tuple of start, page, and data. These two values are the names of the classes right here. So what we're doing with them is we're creating objects of these um, both these classes, but in a rather efficient manner by incrementing in a tuple. And then we're passing in the parameters container is to parent, self is to controller, and self to dict is to d. Uh, I created that part. Um, and then we're, we're coming back to this uh, dictionary we created up here, and we're referring to this frame, and then we're setting that equal to frame. And then we are actually putting the frame in the window by using dot .grid. Um, and then we're calling this function called show window. And all this does is it takes the frame and then it raises it to the top. So it's actually happening right here, all this code. It's just creating two frames that are pretty much in the same place. But when we call show window on one of them, then tkinter will raise it above the other one ab above the other frame so you'll actually see it better so like maybe there's one frame right like uh here we can pretend this is one frame right here um just this is visual and then there's one frame right here so if i wanted to see this frame then i would use tk.raise and it would come above this frame so it would come like up here ish um so that's what show window does by using the tkraise function. And we call that in our pages too. We initialize the frame and then we also call 
controller.showWindow and then the name of the other class or the other page. Uh, the reason why we use controller is because this is show window is not a function in start page. It's actually a function in my app. So we use controller. So uh, if you remember, we pass in self as controller. So controller here is actually just my app. So we're saying my app dot show window. Um, then we do pretty much the same thing over here. So what's happening is that we're going to have the default kind of template for this was just two frames. One of the frames says to go to the other frame, and when you click it, it goes to the other frame. And then when you click the button again, it'll go back to the normal frame. So that's pretty much what this is. It just allows you to change between frames. And I'll talk about the part that I made. So first I made a dictionary, and here I'll be holding the different buttons. Um, I called it self.dict. And then here, when we were declaring the objects of the classes, I added in that as a parameter. And over here in the initialization function, I also added that as a parameter. And then um, here, I said 4x and e. And then I made this. So if you remember, e was this list of, na of table names in this d database. So we're taking x and we're assigning it to every table name. And then we're creating a label with that text. So if, for example, I had a list of table names, the first one is called test1, second one is test2, third one is test3, then for every, so it would create a label called test1 because it would increment it in that list, and then it would create a button. It also says test1, and I already told you about the command. It'll just switch to this page, which I'll talk about later. And then we pack it. So what's happening right here with this DX? So if you don't know how to use dictionaries, this might be a little bit confusing. So let me actually go to the Python shell. So a dictionary, pretty much what you do is you assign um, values to specific things. So if I said D, and then let's say um, test is equal to 3. And then I printed out this dictionary. It would say test is two three. So we're pretty much relating one thing to another. It's kind of like setting variables, but it's a lot more powerful. That's why I used it. Um, and also you can increment it on like variables, so you can actually like create infinite amounts. But uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm cre I'm taking that table name, and I'm making a object in this dictionary under that table name. So if the first table name was test1, that would be assigned to x, and then it would be saying something like this. And then it would be equal to button blah blah blah. And then we would pack it. So we're pr pretty much we're just creating a button called that first name of the table, and then we're packing it into the actual window. Um, and then I also created this part over here. Um, so first we create an empty list called data because I'm going to be using that here soon. I oh, actually do not need this. I just realized. Yeah. Okay, whatever. I'll just leave it there. Um, so we're using the same thing for X and E. If you remember, all this is doing is assigning X to every name of the table in that list of table names. And what we're doing here is we're taking the X in the dictionary. Remember, we made these before. So it's referring to the same dictionary, and it's going to find that table name. So for example, when I was first incrementing through this, I had test1 as the first x, for example. And I created a dictionary object under the name test1. Down here, it'll increment x through e again. And let's say the first thing in e is test1. Then it'll go into the dictionary, and it'll search for test1. And then it'll find the text of that button. So you may not know what this is. It's a tkinter thing. Um, if, as you can see here, we have a button, and then we have different parameters. You have self, we have text, and we have command. Um, self, that's just where the window is. But um, what this means when you're putting brackets and then the apostrophes and then this well, text right here, it's just referring to that config. So in this case, my text is equal to x, which is just the table name. So it's going to sign that table name to text um, because that's what the text was for the button and then we are going to select all from that table and then we're going to put it in a human readable format I talked about this in my SQLite 3 tutorial 
and we're just appending it to a list here that we created called data and then we're assigning label to data and then we are adding the text as label right here um, and then we have a button that'll just bring us back to the uh, home page and every time we increment through this the data list gets reset so we're not repeating information and yeah that's pretty much what it is and then we just create an object of the my app class and uh, loop it so let's do this let's say a test tutorial um, let me, so we're gonna create a thing with test one so you'll see it immediately says test one I click on it and it gives me these two values Billy 12 Bob 35 and then remember I just made that right now now if I were to um, and now I can click back go to the start page and I'll come back um, if I were to add another value um, so if I was to run if I were to run this again then it would actually add Billy and Bob yet again so when you click on it you'll see another set of Billy and Bob that's because we didn't we we still have this um, execution still taking place uh, the SQLite is still executing this and then if we want to create a new table like test 2 for example then we could do that and it would automatically create another um, button and label that's because we put in a for loop and when we click test 2 um, it shows us this set right here because we just created it, it only came in once, and it also shows the thing here from before. And we could go to start page on anyone we want, and that's how that will work. Um, if you run it again, you'll see that now we have another set. If we run it yet again, you'll see we have yet another set of Billion Bob. We can also add test 3. And if we run that, it'll also work. It'll add another button we click this we have two here six here four here just like last time except we now have a new table if we run it again now we have four if we run it again we have six and if we run it once more we have eight um so yeah that's how this program works you just uh you know you get your table name the button with the same name uh, you can obviously make this like you if you don't want it coming down in a column you can you know use different geometry managers like dot grid um, and then uh, you can also format this in a better way but this is just a very basic on how it works uh, so yeah that's all this video is for just showing off a little project I made and uh, yeah see you next time